Hey YouTube, welcome back to my garage. It's been a few months since I posted last, but here we are. We're in front of the arcade cabinet. It was a long, cold winter, and my garage door isn't insulated, so I didn't do much work. But today, we're back at it. We're gonna lay out the buttons for the arcade and show you how to do that. So the first thing I did is I got this Forzner bit set uh, I have uh, something like 16 sizes that I got for Christmas. Nice Christmas gift. It was 20 bucks on Amazon. And uh, everyone online tells you if you're making these holes for arcade buttons, you want to use Forstner bits. Uh, this is the channel of a guy figuring things out for the first time. I've never done this before, but I'm inclined to take the collective wisdom of, of Reddit's arcade subreddit. And, uh, and I went for Forstner bits here. So... What I did is I measured these guys. I didn't recall exactly what size they are. I have two size of buttons, uh, two smaller ones for like start select and then uh, eight each of the larger ones. These are exactly 30, 30 millimeters in diameter. So I got my 30 millimeter uh, Forstner bit, drilled a hole, and as you can see, that fits really nicely. I'm not gonna push that all the way in because these pressure clips here, if you can tell, uh, they're not really designed for repeated action, so I, I only wanted to do one test hole to see if it would fit. Uh, and it took a, a little bit of work to get it out slowly without damaging it. Uh, but it fits really snugly, uh, there's no play in it, there's no wiggles, there's, there's nothing. It feels very secure. So I'm, I'm happy with how the 30mm Forstner bit cuts through this 3 quarter inch ply. It takes a lot of time because you have to use it on a slow setting. Uh, one thing to note, there is some blowout on the back, but I'm not terribly concerned about that. It's a thin layer, uh, just the, the top veneer, not even the whole amount of it. But uh, with three quarter inch ply, I'm not too concerned about not having enough strength to the wood itself. So uh, get yourself a good set of fours or mitts if you're going to do this. Reddit was right in this instance. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. The next step is to lay out the buttons. Now, when I tried to look into how to do that, I went online and there's a bunch of resources you can find out there for standard button setups and everything. Uh, but the more I dug into it, the really hardcore, uh, really um, high-end competitive, like Japanese arcade competition people who made their own joysticks and their own setups, they custom size them to their fingers. Uh, the theory is that if I am using a standard approach on standard width button spacing, then that might be a fraction of a second longer to reach over to that button than if I had something designed for my, you know, size six foot three frame hand. So, the, the main thing that I took away from all the research I did on button configurations was use your own hand as a template. Uh, this joystick surface here has a slight rake to it. It's a, it's a five degree angle and that's designed for comfort so that if you're having marathon gaming sessions, you're, you're comfortable here and there's a, a little bit of an incline which is slightly more ergonomically comfortable than just being flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of lay out my hand and match up the buttons accordingly and try to evenly space them. Now, the thing you do have to consider is if your buttons end up super close together, you're going to chew up all the wood in between there. So there is a limit to how close you can get together depending on the strength of your material. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any competitive gaming. Uh, but I definitely want to space them out enough so that there's a good chunk of wood in between each hole so that I don't blow through or something, I don't know. Uh, so, what I've done is I've done that exercise and then I've mapped it out over here. So, the goal is to have equal spacing just to repeat this pattern up here. That's my left hand, that's not quite quite right. But 
this is this is quite ergonomic for me and to just shift that up here that allows me to jump between rows pretty quickly if I'm playing something that needs all eight buttons. I don't know if the system I'm actually going to hook up is going to ever require eight buttons, but we'll see. So that's that's essentially the configuration I'm going for. Uh, you could tell that these two buttons here are pretty close together. Uh, there's also, it's pretty close there. But I'm still going to be left with hmm, maybe a quarter inch in between. I'd like to think that's substantial enough. Let's measure that actually. I mean, it's approximately 6.8 millimeters. Alexa, what's 6.8 millimeters in inches? 6.8 millimeters is about 0 0.268 inches. Okay, so that's about a quarter inch. That should be good. Let's go back to this guy. So if I have quarter inch. That ends up being a pretty substantial amount in there. What do you think? I think that's, I think that's good. Well, only one way to find out. Spend several months building an arcade machine only to have it fail on you. So now that we've got our button layout configured, you can see I tweaked it a little bit. I found that if they were too low, I needed to bring them up. But massage it. Spend some time massaging it. Make sure it's comfortable on your fingers. Uh, and then make sure you've got that, that good spacing on, on the wood left. But where where do I put it? Uh, I've, I've got player one space and player two space. And there's a line here. Um, but whereabouts do I put it? These markings were me playing around earlier. Pay no attention to those. Because I also want to optimize the spacing with the joystick. We have to figure out where that goes as well. But then there's one other little treat that I want to build into this thing. I need some cup holders. So if you've got some pop or some bevies, then you want to uh, you want to set that in there so that everything works accordingly. Maybe the beverage is over by the right hand. It's not bad. Uh, you also have to consider that there's going to be a TV here. I haven't figured out how I'm going to mount that yet. So I don't want to put this up tight against there. I'm going to probably sink this back a little and that comes down. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit. And then once I'm happy with where that lands, then uh, I'll just take a, a center punch and, and mark these holes. And then, you know, it's, it's off to the races and time to, time to build me an arcade cabinet. Now, this may feel silly and uncomfortable, but uh, play around with it. I've made a little template for my joystick, for my cup holder, uh, for, my, for my buttons, and feel what's comfortable. This, this is not going to be a comfortable posture. You need, you need some room for your, your elbows to, to lay in the correct anatomical position at your side to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, so, so move these around and, and, and see what, what really works for you. Uh, you're, you're playing, there's a cutscene, you grab your nice refreshing beverage. I'm in no way sponsored by Coca-Cola. There's no chance I'm a big enough channel for that. But uh, imagine if your product was sponsored here. Yeah. Anywho, 
yeah, play around with it. See what feels comfortable. See where your, your body naturally rests. This is your arcade machine. I'm gonna have my buddy, probably Sean, you, you've seen him on other videos playing over here. I don't care about his comfort level. I need to be as comfort, comfortable as possible. This is my machine. If you're making one at home, make it comfortable for you. You're gonna do most of the playing on it. So spend some time, feel silly, moving stuff around. Pretend like you're playing and you're taking breaks and this, this right now, it, uh, this, this feels pretty good. I might jump you that net in a bit. Yeah, I like that. We're going to go with this. Okay, YouTube, want to find out how to find the center of a circle? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a line through the circle. Doesn't matter where, just draw a straight line. Draw another parallel line. I'm using this edge here as my guide. Anywhere else through the circle. Now, all you got to do is find, take this point here, and draw it through there. And take this point here, draw it through there and that's your center pretty cool huh I'll do the same thing here mind you I need a better need a longer T can't quite need it but not too shabby eh? that's your exact center so what you can see I've done here is I've I've punched all these spots in I've got joystick one cup holder one buttons for player one and then I took that, remember my center line, I cut it, I mocked it up over here, and then I've got my, my holes punched for player two as well. I'm going to make some, some markings on here in pencil that are going to help me see them, but we are ready to start drilling. Okay, here's our handiwork. Let's take a, a close look. A little bit of an issue there. Maybe I'll use some filler. I know I need some filler for some of these gaps. So maybe I'll use a little bit there. You'll probably never see it once the, once the discussion plate, it's not really a discussion plate, but the flange on the button will cover most of that. Uh, fun fact, I did these on the slow drill setting. I did these on the fast drill setting. There's no real difference. Actually, the fast drill setting looks like less blowout. The advice online was to use the slow setting, but if I'm honest, this worked just as well, if not a little better. I had a little bit of an issue right there, but not too bad. Let's take a look. I just can't help myself. Let's see. I don't know if this is satisfying for you guys to watch, but it sure is satisfying for me to actually put buttons in the places where they're going to be. Oh yeah. Yeah, that feels really comfortable. It may not be as comfortable for Sean playing over here on player, player two. But for, for my hands, that feels excellent. So, joystick goes there. 
on this blue joystick, there's no like cover plate, but on the red joystick, shipped with this thing. Now, this is just plastic. It's not really gonna match the aesthetic of what I'm going for. Again, I'm going to stain this thing in like a weathered gray stain. So it's kind of blending like old worldy weather weathered wood with newfangled buttons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two of those plates out of this. This is quarter inch mahogany underlay. I'm just gonna carve two little joystick plates there, and then the cup holders go right in there. I haven't decided how I'm going to seat those yet. Again, there's a there's a rake here. I don't know. I don't know if I'll level it. I think I'll just put them in flush. There's enough. There's enough in there to to work with that. Let's let's try that out. Let's let's see. That fits in there. I hold that at a. That's fine. Yeah, I'll just put it in flush. I don't need to get fancy with that. That'll be fine. Well, there you have it. We've got our joysticks in place. I need to find some shorter screws to screw them in place, but that's. That's the height they're going to be. I don't think I'll make a recess for them. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I didn't show you, but I added in the start select buttons. Um, but we're we're coming along now. Now all I need to do is buy a fridge, buy a TV, buy some speakers. We're getting there. Thanks for tuning in. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share it with anyone you think you'd enjoy it. But most of all, uh, I really appreciate you tuning in with everything that's going on with this COVID-19 pandemic. I have a little more time to spend at home and uh, work on something like this on the weekends. So I'll try and make some progress for you and give you something, something to tune in for. Uh, stay safe out there.